Let me teach you a, a nice rule called L'Hopital's rule, which is going to help you in evaluating limits. If you try to evaluate a limit by directly substituting in for x, sometimes you get what's called indeterminate form of type 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. If we look at these two examples, those are examples of both of those indeterminate forms. Let me show you. The first one, we have the limit of x squared minus 7x plus 10 over x minus 2 as x approaches 2. If I were to try direct substitution, if I sub in 2 for each of the x's, I would have 2 squared minus 7 times 2 plus 10 all over 2 minus 2. In the numerator, I have 4 minus 14 plus 10, that's 0. In the denominator, I have 2 minus 2, that's 0. So this is indeterminate form of type 0 over 0. And if I look at the second limit I have here, I have the limit as x goes to infinity of a quotient of two quadratic functions. Now, if I want a limit at infinity, really all I have to do is look at the highest degree terms in both the function in the numerator and denominator and see as x goes to infinity what's happening to those terms. Well, I could see that 6x squared as x goes to infinity is going to get infinitely large and 2x squared as x goes to infinity is also going to get infinitely large. I also know the, what the graphs of both of these functions look like. They're both quadratics with a positive leading coefficient, so I know they open up. And I can see on that graph I just sketched there that as x goes to infinity, the y values are going to infinity as well. So that's another reason why I know that this is the limit as x goes to infinity of the quotient of those quadratics. That's indeterminate form of infinity over infinity. So in either of these cases, if you get either of those indeterminate forms, there are different ways to evaluate the limit of this. Like we can do some algebra to figure it out, but there's also the possibility of us being able to use L'Hopital's rule when we have these indeterminate forms. Let me first show you what you should already know how to do with these. For the first limit, let me just rewrite out the question. When evaluating a limit and you get indeterminate form of 0 over 0, you probably know that a good strategy is to try and rewrite the function that you're taking the limit of. So I would rewrite it by factoring the numerator. And then the limit of the simplified version of this, right, I can cancel those factors of x minus 2. And now let me rewrite my limit statement. I know these limits are equal because the two functions are equal at all x values other than 2, and that's fine when we're doing limits approaching 2. And now direct substitution would result in 2 minus 5, which is negative 3. For the other one that we had, a limit at infinity, let me just rewrite that question as well. If you get indeterminate form of infinity over infinity, a good strategy is to divide all the terms by the highest power of x that you see in the denominator of the function. So if I divide all the terms by x squared, and then look at the behavior of each of those terms as x approaches infinity, I would see that I get 6 minus 0 plus 0 over 2 minus 0, which is equal to 6 over 2, which is 3. So those are ways that we can get those limits algebraically by rewriting the functions in equivalent ways. But there's another way we could have solved these limit problems. I want to teach you the easier method that involves using the rule that's called L'Hopital's rule. If when you're evaluating a limit and you get an indeterminate form of type 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, that's important. We have to have had one of those indeterminate forms. We can use L'Hopital's rule, which, very simply put, says that if we look uh, down here, that the limit of a quotient of functions, so if we want the limit of a quotient of f at x and g at x as x approaches c, it's equal to the limit of the quotient of their derivatives. It's equal to the limit of f prime of x over g prime of x as x approaches c. Now, the conditions that have to be met to use that are that we have to get those indeterminate forms of either 0 over 0, so f at x and g at x both have to be approaching 0, or infinity over infinity, so f at x and g at x both have to be approaching plus or minus infinity. So since we have those indeterminate forms for those two questions we did at the start, Let's see how we can apply L'Hopital's rule to this. I can differentiate the numerator and denominator completely separately, and then that's going to be equal to the limit of the original function. So I can say this is equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of the derivative of the numerator, which is 2x minus 7, 
over the derivative of the denominator, which is 1. And now if I try direct substitution, sub and 2, we get 2 times 2 minus 7, which is negative 3. Notice that's the same answer. Let me scroll back up. The same answer we got by doing it this way earlier. We got negative 3 by doing the rewriting by factoring and simplifying method. But L'Hopital's rule was a lot quicker. And if we look at the other example we did already, I know that because this is indeterminate form of infinity over infinity, I can differentiate the function in the numerator and denominator separately from each other, and that the limit is going to remain equal. So this is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of 12x minus 7 over 4x. Now, this function, if I tried direct substitution, I can see that I'm going to get indeterminate form of infinity over infinity again, right? 12x, as x goes to infinity, is going to be infinity. And 4x, as x goes to infinity, is also going to be infinity. So because I have indeterminate form of infinity over infinity when evaluating a limit, we can do L'Hopital's rule again. I can differentiate the function in the numerator and the function in the denominator. So this would equal the limit as x goes to infinity of 12 over 4. And the limit of any constant is just the constant. So this equals 3. Once again, the same answer that we got using the other method earlier in the lesson. So now that you understand when we can use L'Hopital's rule and hopefully how it works, let's do a couple more examples. Example 1 says we want to find the limit of ln x over x minus 1 as x approaches 1. So with any limit example, it's always a good idea, just try direct substitution right away. If I sub in 1 for both my x's, I have ln of 1 over 1 minus 1. Ln of 1 is 0, and 1 minus 1 is 0, so this is indeterminate form of type 0 over 0. So I know I can use L'Hopital's rule to try and figure out what the limit of this function actually is. L'Hopital's rule tells me that I'm allowed to differentiate the numerator and differentiate the denominator, and the limit is going to be equal. So I can say this equals the limit, as x approaches 1, of the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, over the derivative of x minus 1, which is just 1. Now I can try direct substitution, and I get 1 over 1 over 1, which is just 1. So I found the limit. Let's try another example. Let's find a limit at infinity um, of e to the power of x over x squared. If I tried direct substitution with this, I'd have e to the infinity and over infinity squared, which is infinity over infinity. I also know this makes sense because if I analyze the limit as x goes to infinity of the function in the numerator and denominator, well, I know e to the x is an exponential function and I know that x squared is a quadratic. So for both of those, I can see that they're going up to the right. So as x goes to infinity, y is going to infinity. Because this is indeterminate form of infinity over infinity, L'Hopital's rule is allowed to be used. Let's take the derivative of the function in the numerator and the function of the, in the denominator, and then see if we're able to calculate the limit. So this equals the limit as x goes to infinity of the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x, over the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Now, if I tried direct substitution again, I would once again get infinity over infinity. That's indeterminate form, so I could apply L'Hopital's rule again. Let me differentiate the function in the numerator and the function in the denominator, and that would give me the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x over 2. Now if I try direct substitution, I would get e to the infinity over 2. e to the infinity is infinity, and infinity over 2 is just infinitely large. It's infinity. So this limit actually doesn't exist. It's an infinite limit. We just know the behavior of the function trends towards infinity as x goes to infinity. So the limit itself doesn't exist, but we can describe it as the y values going towards infinity. Jensen, man.